Tom here from Lawrence Systems. I always ask people to leave their thoughts and comments down below, and on my DNS video, many of you did. I think a point of clarification was specifically around Next DNS. I pinned a comment to another video. This is a reply to that video because I said free account and listed the IP address, which is the DNS for Next DNS if you use it for free. But many of you encouraged me that I should do this test again with an account set up. So I set one up. So now that we have an account set up, I rerun the numbers and the results are definitely different. So let's dive into that. Now, for those of you that didn't watch my other video, but I recommend you do, I'm gonna give you the really short version if you want a longer version of more detail. Well, that's what the other video is for. These are the DNS I tested. This is where I got the sites from. This is the process I used to clean up the site list and clarify which DNS I was going to test and how I dump them into a spreadsheet. Then this is the bash script that you'll also find in that forum. I'm also putting in exactly the command I use with grep to kind of clean up the file to get rid of some of the .ru and .top domains. And then finally, we have the results. Now, these are the first results. We're actually done on a list built from October 10th of 2023. And this is where people had problem with me just saying I used NextDNS 45 90 28 131, which is their free. You don't have to register your information with them. I called it just a free account, as in you can query it for free without any questions. But more specifically, it's one you don't register with, which of course did not score that high in terms of blocking. It resolved 33% of these malicious domains. So I went and created an account, which requires now them to register an email and then register an IP address. And then they gave you this feed right here, which I turned on all of them. People said, hey, if you turn on all the threat detection, Things like, you know, newly registered domains, dynamic DNS, next DNS, ads and track blocker list, Google safe browsing, their AI driven threat detection and threat intelligence feeds. And you can see the IP address here. This was a server I spun up over in Linode slash Akamai uh, just to run these queries. And so I don't mind showing you that IP address. So you have to tell them what IP it's coming from. So they have all this data on you. And the results were actually quite good. So all of you that said, hey, if you turn all those features on an XDNS, and by the way, you notice the IP address changed because they give you, once you register with them, a different IP to use, you can see that absolutely none of these were coming through. And I thought that was great. So definitely there's a substantial increase in the effectiveness of NextDNS, provided you register and let them know where all your data is coming from. And it really comes down to your choice of whether or not you want to have some company. And they have a fair price, I think, if you want to buy a paid account with them. They limit how many you can use on the free tier. And then once you reach a certain number of queries, you have to do it. But that's really up to you. Do you want to register your data and have all your DNS queries held by a company? Now, they have privacy and policy statements, but they are a for-profit company. And what always bothers me about any of these companies is, well, they're holding on to a whole lot of my data. And I try to limit how many companies I have holding on to my data because at some point they may get bought or sold to another company that will like to mine all of that data that I have in there because they're like, I wonder what all the queries were that Tom was sending there. And that's the one reason I had chose Quad 9 out of my last list. And I still stand by that statement because Quad 9 doesn't have any ability to do it. Now, this is really focused on people and their personal use. And a lot of people, if you want to hide behind a VPN, well, now you have a privacy thing, unless you're revealing your privacy again by giving your DNS queries to a third-party company that you registered to. Now there's ways around it. You're going to set up an anonymous email and get some prepaid credit cards so you can uh, pay them so you've disconnected your identity for it. But at some point, just using Quad9 works for me for privacy because they don't log anything. So a lot of this is more me leaning towards privacy on this. I know this is more home lab and home user focus is why I did this video. People asking about an update. This is not exactly a business use case, but I still found it very interesting. And I will agree with all of you that said, hey, Tom, next DNS, if you register with them, definitely does a better job. And there's probably several other companies or several other DNS ones I hadn't heard of. I'm sure maybe they're even using some of the same threat feeds and have a also reasonable offer. I just didn't have time to start loading up everyone and registering accounts with all of them to test them. It wasn't really that much in interest me, but I do want all of you to be able to test this. That's why I documented how I did it, give you the entire bash script. This is something you can run yourself. You can run it from home. You can spin up something over at Linode like I did and spin it up in the cloud and just 
run those tests, dump those queries in there, and decide for yourself what is the ideal situation for you. Either way, once again, leave your thoughts and comments down below, like and subscribe to see more content on this channel, and uh, see over in the forums where we can have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics you may have seen on the channels. And also say hi to me on any of the socials you'll find over at lawrencesystems.com whenever you're watching this video. Thanks.